Hi, here's an updated video that I hope will better meet your needs. First, I have the spreadsheet open, and this is the spreadsheet that I have distributed to you. And the first thing we need to do is save it to the correct file name. I'm in Excel 2007. To do this, I click on the Office button, Save As, Excel Workbook, I'm going to follow the guidelines that are indicated here. I'm going to replace the four X's with the subject rubric. So in other words, I might use econ. I'm going to next replace the ones with the course number. For example, 2020. Finally, I will replace the three twos that are in a row with the section number, perhaps 101. So I have Econ 2020 section 101, and this is what I'll use for my example. I have the spreadsheet open, and the first page is a sample page, and you can look at this and use this as a general guideline. A very quick overview, this is a sample for the 2009 fall semester for a different subject, but this is just a sample. And you can see here that they were reporting for three out of five successfully answered questions. But I'll let you explore this spreadsheet. It's provided for you as a sample. If you look at the bottom of the spreadsheet, you will see a number of yellow tabs. Results SL01, Results SLO2, etc. You'll begin by clicking the Results SLO1 tab. My video, there we go, my video software was in the way. Let me move it out of the way. Okay, so I have selected, I've clicked on the Results SLO1 tab. I'll now begin to fill in the yellow boxes. The first yellow box is the reporting semester and it currently shows 2009 fall. That's correct, so no actions required. The next yellow box says uh, select course and that's for the course number. So I'm going to click inside that box. When I click, I see that now I have a small drop down arrow and I'm going to select that. I see a listing of many courses and I'm going to scroll down in that little box until I see the course that I'm using in this particular example, Econ 2020. It fills in the course name and the lead faculty member. The next yellow box is labeled Sections. For this class, I'm going to say that I'm only filling this in for Section 101. So when I click on that box, I type the numbers. Then I go on to the next yellow box, the one right below it, and I'm going to click on that next yellow box. It says students must successfully answer. What it's asking about, in fact, when I hover over that, it says, for example, if your measurement is to answer three out of five questions correctly, then you would enter three here. But in my example, the students are only required to answer two out of three questions. So I'm going to type the number two. I then simply go across to the next yellow box because it's two out of three. See how I'm clicking in the yellow box and then typing the number. Below that, the instructions say, according to your SLO plan, what percentage of students will achieve the student learning outcome? Typically, not always, this is a number like 70%. So I'm just simply going to type 70, and you can see that the percent is already completed. The next yellow box is wanting to know the total number of student respondents in my class. Let's say that I had five students. I'm going to scroll down and begin to fill in the yellow boxes down here. Now, there are provisions for up to 28 students, but as I've indicated, I only had five, so I'll simply